Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Frost V3 PC build, the third iteration of one of the most iconic PCs on the channel, right next to Big Red, which is my personal system. For those of you who are new to the channel, let me give you a quick refresher. Just like every new iteration of a PC build, it's gotta be much faster than the previous version. And well, we got the parts to do that. So you just build a brand new shiny PC and you're greeted with this nasty notification on the bottom right corner of your screen. Well, instead of going out there and paying full price for a Windows key, you guys can actually get one for less than $15. That's right, you guys can get a Windows 10 Pro CD key for less than $15 by visiting yourcdkey.com or by clicking my link below and using my code TS20 for that extra 20% off. They also sell Windows 11 and Microsoft Office keys and the same discount code applies. Now, once you get your CD key, all you have to do is go into the activation settings on Windows and put in the new key and watch the watermark disappear. So this time we're going with AMD's fastest Zen 4 consumer CPU, the Ryzen 9 7950X. It's got a nasty, disgusting, filthy 16 core 32 thread processor, which is just gonna shred through every application we toss at it. And while it might not be the fastest gaming CPU on the market, it did exceptionally well in single and multi core performance compared to the 13900K. This PC will be a high-end gaming system as well as a productivity system. So for streaming and editing videos, this is gonna this is gonna do it all. Now, when it came to the motherboard, there weren't that many options out there for a beautiful white-themed X670 board with all the bells and whistles. So the choice for me was very simple on this. The RG Strix X670E was pretty much the perfect choice for this build with its 16 plus two power stage design. And besides the silver VRM heat sinks and the armor will blend in nicely with the color scheme. Now for memory, it was a bit tricky. Originally, I wanted to toss in four 16 gigabyte kits for a total of 64 gigs running at 5,600 megahertz. But on AMD's website, it states that the 7950X only supports up to 3600 megahertz if you use all four DIMM slots. So it will automatically underclock our frequency if I use all four of the sticks. So that is why I've decided to just go with two sticks to maximize the fastest speed. After all, I will benefit in gaming with faster memory as opposed to going with higher capacity memory. But you know what, just for fun, at the end of the video, I'm gonna toss in the other two sticks as well to occupy all four of the DIMM slots and I'm gonna test the games with all four sticks just to see if there's a huge difference between the two. For storage, we're tossing in a four terabyte M.2 SSD from Corsair. This is the MP600 Pro. It's a PCI Gen 4 NVMe SSD, which means we get much faster read and write speeds. Perfect for the operating system and all the games which we'll be benchmarking. Now, if you guys remember, Frost V2 was a full custom loop PC build. And as much as I wanna do the same thing with Frost V3, there just aren't any water blocks for the MSI Supreme RTX 4090. So I will water cool the CPU, but I can't water cool the GPU. So I will be using the XC7 RGB Pro in white from the Corsair Hydro series to water cool the CPU. This is the Corsair IQ 5000X. QL edition. Not only does it come with four pre-installed QL fans, but the entire case is in white. I didn't like the subtle gray accents that Corsair used on their previous IQ cases. It would just ruin the whole color scheme I was going for. In fact, I had to repaint the gray accents in white for Frost V2, so it's nice to see that they eventually made a true white version of these cases. However, I will be swapping the four included QL fans with Corsair's new RGB Elite fans, just for consistency. I want the entire build to have the same fans. Not bad, not bad at all. It's coming together very nicely. 
Um, I'm not too concerned with the silver accents from the VRM heat sinks and the armor because I feel like it's gonna blend in a lot better once the lights are on. Um, right now you can tell the difference between silver and white, but it's not gonna be that noticeable once the build is completed. But yeah, we got the motherboard in place. I did swap the QL fans that came with the case with the ML Elite. So we have three intake in the front, one in the back for exhaust, which leaves us room to add three more exhaust on the top. So we're gonna be installing the XR5 360 white 360 millimeter radiator. As I mentioned earlier, we are doing basically a half loop. So we're only gonna be custom water cooling the CPU. And rule of thumb is you're gonna need at least one radiator per water block that you're installing in your custom loop to help with heat dissipation. So since we're only doing the CPU, this will be plenty to cool it. Uh, we do have plenty of space over here to install our pump and reservoir combo. So that's gonna be perfect. So yeah, let's get this out of the box and then hook up three additional ML Elite fans on here for exhaust. I'm so glad Corsair makes white radiators. This saves me the trouble of having to paint it. So yeah, look at that. Even the fins are all white. This is gonna work beautifully. All right, so here is the tricky part, figuring out with position to install the radiator with the inlet and outlet ports on the right side or on the left side. I can make it work either way. It really just comes down to how clean I want the run. So the CPU block is over here. Ideally, I would want one really close to the radiator so the runs are a bit short, but then the second run from the radiator is gonna be a bit longer going to the pump. And I don't know how the runs are gonna be until I have the pump and reservoir installed as well. So I guess, I guess let's do that first before I install the radiator because I don't wanna take out the fans and then we do this if I change my mind. So this is the pump and res combo I'll be using for Frost V3. This is the XD5 RGB and white. I think this is the same one I used in Frost V2 actually. I just love the fact that you can buy all the water cooling gear from Corsair. That's super convenient. And the fact that they offer a white color is just an added bonus. It saves me the trouble of having to paint this as well. So thank you Corsair. All right, these are the two brackets that came with the pump. This one gets mounted to any 120 millimeter fan. I'm gonna be mounting it to the bottom fan over here. And then the pump sits into this one. And afterwards, this attaches to this and you can control the height of the pump. So pretty straightforward stuff here. All right, before I do anything else, I want to install the power supply inside the case. That way I know how I want to route the cables. I'll be going with the Corsair HX1500i. This is an absolute overkill for this build. We don't need this much power for the 4090, but I wanna future-proof the system for years to come. I feel like this will last me long enough until the RTX 8000 series from Nvidia. This is also Corsair's new power supplies that they've designed specifically for the RTX 4090 and 4080 graphics cards because they come with their very own 12 VH power cable. That way you don't have to use these ugly default 16 pin cables from Nvidia. But luckily we're not gonna be using any of these because would it really be a frost build without custom cables? Look how clean the custom 16 pin cable came out, you guys. It even has a little shield over here to prevent the cables from bending. Corsair, Corsair, Corsair. I don't know what you guys are thinking. I don't know what your design team is smoking on. Like, I still don't understand what the point of this is. I, I, I'm guessing it's to cover or hide the cables behind it, but the design is so stupid. Like it's so close to the motherboard tray where it's difficult to route the 24 pin cable through the grommet. Look what it's doing to the freaking cable. Look how much it's bending just so I can get it out of there. How did this get past the design stage. Honestly, it, it just, it frustrates me so much. All right, so I decided to mount the radiator with the ports facing the right side of the case. This is going to give me the cleanest runs inside the build. 
This is gonna be a little trickier to do because we're missing a GPU block and a second radiator. The GPU block is kind of like a bridge when you're doing a full custom loop. It's a lot easier to do clean runs because you have this extra set of ports over here to run the tubes from the top rad or even from the CPU block. But because this entire piece is missing, it's a bit trickier to do nice runs. Oh God, this is gonna be kind of difficult. The APS cables are getting in the way. Of course, there, you gotta give us more clearance from the top, please. Oh, I think, I think we can do it. It's gonna be super tight. Let me try and plug the APS cables closer to the back of the case. Okay, if we can bend it all the way here in this corner, I think we can make it work. Let's give it a shot. Oh yeah, that worked. That worked, thank you. Oh man, look at that. <laughs> it's a very tight fit. Uh, I don't like how it's just kind of going over the IO cover over here, but that's literally the only way I can get that freaking top rat installed. All right, all the cables are plugged in, ready to go. The only thing I need to do is plug in the graphics card. That way I know how much space it's gonna take up inside the case, and then I can plan my tube run. So without wasting any more time, let's pop in this bad boy. The MSI Supreme X RTX 4090. That just, that brings chills down my bones just by saying that. Supreme RTX 4090, folks. Oh, <laughs> look at this chonker. Dang. Oh, no. Look how close it is to the pump. Oh, no, 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 no. This can't happen. This cannot happen. This cannot happen right now. No, no, no. You can't. You can't do this to me. Please, you can't do this to me. Let's remove this, these PCI brackets first. Please, Corsair, don't do this to me. My lord and savior. This is, this is not gonna work, is it? Oh, Christ. Why didn't I think to check the GPU first? Look how massive this card is, you guys. It is blocking this entire area for the pump. There's no way I'm gonna have to do some modding to the case. If I can somehow lower the pump to over here, it can work. There's plenty of space between the GPU and the front fans because this section of the reservoir is narrow. It's narrower than this area where the pump is. This is what the issue is right now. It's, it's just too wide. And with the bracket included, there's no space. But there's no way for me to lower the bracket, unfortunately. There's no other 120 millimeter fan on the bottom where I can hook this up to. So I'm gonna have to find a way to mod it to the case because I still need something to hold the pump. I can't just leave it down here. That is not safe. Man, this build was going so damn well. It was, it was too good to be true and I knew it. Something had to go wrong. I just, I wish I had a freaking water block for the Supreme. That would have solved the problem, okay? I would have got rid of 90% of the damn GPU. Most of it is just the heatsink and the cooling. This is where the PCB ends. The PCB ends right here, guys. Look how short the, uh, the actual GPU is. It would have freed up so much space, but the blocks aren't available, so I have no choice. I'm gonna do some brainstorming, figure out what the hell I need to do with the, with the case, and I'll be right back. One eternity later. All right, here is one thing I can do, and it's not the prettiest option, but it is an option. I can remove the bottom 120 millimeter fan and push in the pump bracket a lot closer to this entire um, fan bracket instead. So this will basically push the entire pump bracket about an inch in this way, which will give me plenty of space to slide in the pump. That is one option that I can do 
but it's not the prettiest like I said because we're gonna have only two fans in the front and you're gonna see a nasty bracket in the front, but it is doable that way. The second option, which in my opinion is probably the best option for this build right now, without having to mod the case or drill holes into it, is to bring all three of the fans and install it on the front of this bracket. This way, it's still gonna look nice from the front because we're not gonna have a fan missing on the bottom, but also we're gonna have plenty of space in the back for the pump. The downside to this is unfortunately, we won't be able to install the filter anymore because it's sitting in the front of the bracket and it's also gonna be really close to the front panel. So I'm not sure how that's gonna affect thermals, but this is really the only option without having to damage the case. It's a beautiful case. I hate to poke holes into it. Um, so this is the best route to take right now while still building an aesthetically pleasing system, which is very important for Frost, for Frost V3, I should say. All right, let's try this one more time. Oh, let's go, baby. I knew it. Oh yeah, look at that, guys. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Tucked away nicely between the GPU and the front fans. We have plenty of space. That's not gonna interfere with my runs to the CPU block. Downside, unfortunately, like I said earlier, we cannot install the filter anymore. And it's gonna be sitting really close to the front panel. This will definitely still close though. Right? Yeah, <laughs> it definitely closes, but oh my God, look how close it is. It's practically touching it. I don't even know if we're gonna get any, uh, any intake. In fact, there's a few millimeters of space between the front fan and the side panel. I'm able to slide in the, um, the XT7 booklet from Corsair pretty easily. So yeah, it's not completely touching the panel, but I'm really curious to see how this will affect thermals regardless. We're gonna check it out at the end of the video. So we're gonna start with the CPU block. In case you haven't noticed, I did rotate it to its side. That way the outlet is on the top and the inlet is on the bottom. This is gonna help with super clean tube runs. So we're gonna start with the outlet of the CPU block, head towards the top red, from the top red into the pump, out from the pump and back into the CPU block. So here's, I'm gonna turn some music on, work on the bends and I'll be back just in time for the review. Well, here it is, ladies and gents. Frost V3 finally completed. It looks nice. However, I do have to admit, it's just not the same doing a half loop as opposed to doing a full loop. The massive GPU there is an eyesore and it just ruins the overall aesthetic of the build, in my opinion. I feel like if you're gonna be doing a custom water cool build for your PC, you have to fully commit. But as I mentioned earlier, unfortunately, my hands were tied because there are no water blocks available for the Supreme RTX 4090. But aside from that, I think it still looks very clean and the specs certainly live up to Frost's reputation. I was able to pretty much play any game I want in 4K resolution 
with max settings. I was getting close to 200 FPS in Modern Warfare 2 and 4K ultra settings, buttery smooth gameplay, amazing graphics. I mean, what more can you ask for, honestly? The frosted tubes look very nice with Corsair's XL8 blue coolant and the custom cables from Cable Mod just help tie everything together nicely. Look at how clean the 16 pin cable from the GPU looks. I highly recommend anyone using a 40 series car to grab a custom 12 VH power cable from Cable Mod. Not only does it look super clean in your build, but it will also prevent your cables from melting due to improper insertion. I knew that in order to achieve super clean tube runs in this build, I had to do a double bend on both the runs for the top and the bottom. And after only two failed attempts for the top run, I was successfully able to get the double 90 degree bend and I was able to get the bottom one done on the first try. So I got pretty lucky there. The top tube has a 90 degree bend coming out of the CPU block and another 90 degree bend into the top rad. And the bottom one has a bend towards the bottom of the GPU going up and over into the CPU block. I call this one the anxiety bend because if any of the fittings get loose and the coolant starts to leak, the first thing it's gonna touch is the graphics card. And I don't know about you guys, but nothing screams anxiety more than having an expensive GPU sit underneath a constant stream of liquid. If there's any sort of leak in the system, I'm out two grand. And that's a very expensive problem to have. All right, let's talk temps. First off, it's freezing here in California, so I have the heater at my office set to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. So do keep that in mind. Idle, the 7950X averaged around 52 degrees Celsius with peak temps of 56. And the Supreme 4090 averaged around 47 degrees Celsius with a peak temp of 48 degrees. During gaming, we were seeing the CPU hit a maximum temp of 72 degrees Celsius, which is pretty good for a 7950X. And the GPU stayed at a constant 66 degrees. But what's even more impressive is that the fans didn't kick on the entire time I was gaming. It's nice to see that the fans in the front are still able to push air through the case despite being that close to the front panel. You also might have noticed that I have all four sticks of memory installed instead of two. Well, it turns out the 7950X actually does support higher frequency memory even while populating all four DIMM slots. As you can see here in the task manager, all four sticks are running at 5600 megahertz and CPU ID confirms it as well. Either Andy's website has some false information or my peanut brain probably misunderstood it. But either way, I'm really glad I can use all four sticks for more capacity and plus it just looks so much better inside the build. But yeah, that's all I got for Frost V3. Let me know what you guys think about the build. Is there anything you would have done differently? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'll drop a link to all the parts I used below if you guys wanna check it out. Subscribe for more awesome PC builds coming your way. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in the next one.